Hello, welcome to NU 325 Adult Help 1. This class will meet primarily on Mondays from 8.15 to 11.30. There will be requirements on other days, especially the first several weeks of class. And there will be some requirements on various days throughout the semester. So the best thing to do is to print your course calendar so that you can access it easily. I am Melissa Duckett and I'm the course coordinator for NU325. Ms. Killen and I teach this class together, and um, we welcome you to what we hope will be a wonderful semester for you. Brunar and Sudar's textbook of medical surgical nursing is the textbook for this class along with NU322. We have moved on to the 14th edition, and through purchasing the bundle, you will have access to the point, which is Lippincott's online access. This will give you the ability to um, do prep you questions and to do virtual simulation through their vSIM modules. Several of your assignments will come from the sources, so you need to have um, this textbook and bundle to be able to complete assignments. Lippincott Nursing 2018 Drug Handbook has um, advanced to the 2019 edition either of these handbooks, drug handbooks will be um, acceptable. And we will also use DocuCare, which you purchased in first semester. This will be used for clinical documentation and will be checked every week by your clinical instructor. The next several slides are on navigating Blackboard. Our suggestion to you is once the course shell opens, we want you to go in and explore so that you can easily find all the various sections of this course. On the left-hand side are the tabs that will take you to different areas. Announcements is one of the tabs we want to discuss with you. You need to make sure you check your announcements and your email daily. This is how we communicate with you. And it is very important that you get the communication that we send out. The Start Here tab is the next tab on the list. There is a link to the student handbook and the folder entitled Course Information Documents to Mark Reviewed. This is also where you find your printable calendar and assignment list, as well as the course notebook and syllabus. Make sure to mark these as reviewed by the date on the homework calendar. The orientation PowerPoint medication calculation lab and calculation key are found under the orientation tab. The instructor tab lists the instructor contact information. It has our telephone numbers and email addresses so that you can easily contact us. The discussion board, is, there's an area set up where a student question forum is found. 
You can ask questions here to your other classmates as well as to us, or you can email us. Either of those is fine. This is also where exam test plans or blueprints, test blueprints, will be found for each unit exam. My grade is where you can monitor your grades for each assignment and exam. The course content tab is located in the left hand column. When you click on that tab, you will see a course folder, a clinical folder, and a simulation folder. Click on the course folder and under that folder you will find a folder for checkoff documents, lecture content, and ATI information. The checkoff documents section does contain the documentation needed for you to print to bring to checkoffs. It also, for your IV and your Foley checkoff sections, contains video demonstrations for these skills. Under those sections is also PowerPoint presentations on IV and on Foley, which you will see that content again when it is tested on. You need to review these folders prior to each checkoff date and each practice lab date. Your lecture content section contains folders for each unit. That includes surgery, GU, musculoskeletal, endocrine, oncology, and GI. When you click on each content folder, you will see folders within that section for prep, PowerPoint and study sheets, assignments and case studies, and unit-specific resources. The prep needs to be reviewed prior to the first lecture on that content. So for the GU prep, you would review that prior to the beginning of lecture on all GU content. Under the prep, there are also prep U sections, which it will guide you to for uh, anatomy and physiology prep review for each body system. The PowerPoint and study sheets contains all the PowerPoints and any medication study sheets or uh, disease process study sheets for that content. Assignments and case studies folder includes any case studies that we feel may be helpful to help you understand the content as well as the assignments that are due for that content unit. The assignments you find um, will be due according to the course calendar. There are assignments due for each unit, two assignments for each unit. Your unit specific resources include websites, slides, etc., that are related to the content that we are covering. 
Your ATI folder gives general information. There is a section for prep to help guide you in your preparation for your ATI exam. There's a section for remediation for people that are not successful when taking ATI. And there is a section for retesting um, for those that must retest on the ATI content. Under your clinical folder, you will find several tabs. The first is your clinical orientation PowerPoint. It will be reviewed by your clinical faculty on clinical orientation day. The next section is the clinical group instructor info. Your clinical group assignments are found under this section, as well as your clinical instructor contact sheet, which includes their number, as well as the unit you will be doing clinical on. Hospital paperwork, that includes the hospital specific paperwork for each facility and your clinical instructor will direct you on this. Your weekly clinical forms um, will be found in this section as well. You will see your evaluation tool which you will print and bring to clinical orientation. Your self-evaluation tool, which you will print and turn in weekly to your clinical instructor. And assessment forms, which you can print and use during clinical. The concept map information is also found under your clinical folder and it includes your due dates, your concept map template, and the grading guidelines. We also talk about virtual mapping, which will be discussed more during orientation, but there is a section on this under your clinical folder. The simulation folder includes the time schedules and groups, assigned groups for the various simulations. There is also a lab group section, which is very important for you to find um, and print these schedules and groups for practice labs and checkoffs so that you know when to show up for these different activities. Audio recordings of lectures are approved and allowed per the Department of Nursing policy. The audio lectures may be posted to Blackboard by instructors if class is canceled. You can also record lectures um, anytime that you think that will help you. You record them on your own device and then you can transcribe notes from them or listen to the lectures, whatever helps you to prepare for the content. The lectures that you record are not to be posted on any social media sites, um, including YouTube or Facebook, etc. You have a responsibility for yourself and to yourself for learning this content. You need to complete all required uh, readings and come to lecture prepared. You may want to do your prep U A and P assessments. These are recommended. They are not required. You will not receive a grade on them, but they will help prepare you for the content that you're gonna hear in lecture. You also need to make sure that any PowerPoints that you find in the prep section are reviewed so that you can be uh, prepared. That content will not be covered 
in class, but it can be found on the test. Ask questions and speak up when you don't understand. You can always email us with any questions if you think of something after you leave class. If it is something that we think would be good for all the students to hear the answer to, then we will post that in announcements or send out an email. So that's why it's very important for you to check your JSU email daily and review the class announcements daily. Respect is another classroom expectation. Any side conversations need to be taken outside of the classroom. No sleeping in class. Cell phones must be off or silenced. We understand some of you may have family situations going on or you may have children and that is how they contact you. But just make sure that your cell phone is silent so that it does not um, interfere with lecture. It can be very distracting, not only to the instructors, but also to your classmates. No texting or social media should be occurring during lecture. If you are a DSS student, you must notify the faculty in each of your classes every semester. We are not notified by DSS which is the Disability Support Services. You need to notify your faculty face-to-face -face and by email for written verification. You need to notify faculty in each course. So do not think that if you notify Dr. Walker in 326 that she's automatically going to let us know in 325. It is your responsibility to make sure your instructors are aware. These are the test taking rules. Any deviation from these instructions constitutes an act of cheating and is considered a scholar's code violation. You will be sent to the associate dean's office and a scholar's code violation will be filed. There should be no personal items. You are allowed a pencil and basic calculator only. No hats, scarves, purses, backpacks, water bottles, snacks, etc. No electronic devices, no phones. Everything will be placed at the front or back of the classroom during testing, all of your personal items. There is no talking. Appearance of giving assistance to another student equals cheating. Look at your test, the ceiling, or the fac faculty proctor only. Make sure you protect your work. If it is given um, on a Scantron with a written test, then make sure it's covered and flat on the desk. And do not shift your computer monitors. Hands on the desk or keyboard, keyboard only. No discussion of test items or responses after the test is complete is considered appropriate. On your dosage calculation test, you must score greater than or equal to 90% to be considered passing. A basic calculator is allowed, no cell phones or programmable devices. This test will be given weekly times three, and you will receive 2% of your first grade from your first attempt as your drug calculation score. Failure to demonstrate competency by the third exam may result in a course failure. Your assigned activities, assigned learning activities, include ATI skills modules, ATI pharmacology made easy, prep U assignments, and BSIM assignments. This is worth 2% of your final grade. There is no credit for late assignments. Make sure you refer to that calendar that includes your due dates and times. Those are found on a homework calendar 
specific for assignments and homework. Make sure when you print your class calendar or the level calendar that you print that calendar as well. The homework assignments for all three classes that you are in this level will be found on that homework calendar. There are six unit exams worth 71% of your final grade. These questions are multiple choice. That does include select all that apply questions. It is very important to prepare you to take all, select all that apply questions because this is very prominent testing type on NCLEX. The final exam is worth 18% of your final grade and it is comprehensive. It is a hundred multiple choice questions. Makeup exams are given for excused absences only. This includes illness, death of an immediate family member, and you must notify the faculty before the exam begins for this to be considered an excused absence. We recommend that you leave voicemail and email for both instructors. These makeup exams are given once per semester. See the course calendar for specific date and they are given for the whole level on the same day. No student may make up more than two exams per semester, and that is JSU policy. If you challenge an exam item, there is a way, um, correct way to do this. If you disagree with an exam question or answer, Submit the question with answer that you feel is correct via email. Include three references to support your rationale or page number from your book. All documentation is to be submitted no later than 8.15 the day following an exam or exam review. Individual submissions only for challenging an exam item. Don't have one person submit for the class. If you question that, then we expect you to go through the process of challenging the item. All course fac faculty will evaluate rationale. All course faculty review statistics for each exam item and the exam as a whole before posting grades. So when you question when will grades be posted, the answer is as soon as all items have been reviewed and statistics have been run. If we are lecturing, then we can't be evaluating the statistics. So our tests are given on Monday morning. It will be at least Monday afternoon before grades will be posted. The RN Fundamentals Proctored Assessment is the exam you will take for ATI. This is the same exam you took in first semester, but in first semester, you only had to achieve a level one proficiency. And in second semester, you must achieve a level two proficiency to receive credit. You will not have the exact same test. It will be a different form including the same content as what you took in first semester. When you achieve a level two proficiency, you will receive 7% of your final grade. If you are below a level two, then you will retest prior to the end of the semester. And if you achieve a level two at retesting, then you will receive 2% back toward your final grade. Prior to retesting, you must do the required remediation, which is listed in the ATI folder. The remediation plan is listed there, and that is due 
to the course faculty prior to ATI retesting. You will have one concept map and one virtual map due for MU 325 during this semester. The virtual map will be done during clinical, during the clinical day and presented, and we will talk more about that during orientation. The concept map will be your traditional concept map like what you did in first semester. You must obtain a satisfactory on your concept map that's greater than 80% once graded. And if you are less than 80%, this will result in a redo of the same concept map. If the redo is unsuccessful, then a concept map must be done on another patient. Your clinical faculty will talk more to you about concept maps and virtual maps. There is no credit for late assignments. So let's look at a breakdown of your grading evaluation. You will have six unit exams worth 71% of your grade. Your final exam is worth 18% of your grade. You will receive 2% of the grade on your first attempt of your dosage calculation exam. ATI, you must receive a level two benchmark for, to obtain 7% of your grade. And if you are unsuccessful and you retest and then reach the level two, you will receive 2% back towards your grade of the 7% you lost. Your assigned learning activities, there are 12 of these, and that is worth 2% of your grade. We have had students that came down to their final grade and had they not done all of their learning activities, they would not have passed the course. So make sure that you follow your homework calendar and, and turn in every single learning activity by the due date. For your concept map, your skills checkoffs and your second or third dosage calculation exam, you will receive a satisfactory or unsatisfactory. The clinical prep guide we talked to you about prior to the break. We gave you various diagnoses and you were to do the pathophysiology, clinical manifestation, common diagnostic tests, and five common medications for that diagnosis. You also had to do nursing diagnoses related to the medical diagnosis. You identified five problems and three interventions for each medical diagnosis. For the medications that were listed, you had to put the drug class, action, side effects, labs uh, to assess um, for a patient on this medication, and your IV push rate if it was a medication that could be given IV push. These prep guides will be given to your hospital clinical instructor during orientation to the hospital. Here are the diagnoses that we listed uh, for the clinical prep guide. And here is a list of all the medications you were to cover in the clinical prep guide. Marsha Burns stated, work through the temptation to be overwhelmed. Look at what is immediately before you and take first things first. If you look at the whole picture, you're likely to get bogged down in the scope of your responsibility. 
You have not been given more than you can handle, but the way you deal with it is the key to your success. We know every single one of you will be successful in this course if you apply yourself. Any questions that you have, Ms. Killen and myself are here to answer those questions and to help you through this semester. So please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you so much, and we look forward to a wonderful semester.